Okay, uh, we are now turning to TFAS. Um, as is the second paper uh, focusing on uh, fuzzing. Uh, here, the PC meeting liked that TFAS takes a new twist at how fuzzing is done. So, um, by actively transforming the program while it is being fuzzed, they can um, reach locations that other fuzzers cannot achieve. And all the details will now be presented by Hu Peng from Purdue University in his talk on TFAS fuzzing by program transformation. Welcome. Hello. Okay. Uh, thanks very much for. Uh, can you hear me? Is it working? Okay. Good. Thanks very much for your attendance and uh, thanks for the introduction. My name is Hui. Uh, it is a great honor and the pleasure for me to introduce our work, TFUS Fuzzing by Program Transformation, here. This is a joint work with Yang, uh, whose family name is too hard for me to pronounce, and Matthias Pell, otherwise, who is also from Purdue University. Um, uh, fuzzing as a bug finding approach is becoming more and more important in recent years. It has contributed to the finding a lot of uh, CVs of very high impact in a lot of important software systems. Examples include OpenSSL, the software secures data communication over the network, and the Linux kernel, the most widely used uh, kernel software. Web software vendors have started to use it as a proactive defense mirror and uh, hackers are also using it as a first step in exploit development. A fundamental challenge in fuzzing is that it's so-called shadow coverage. It is also called a uh, uh, coverage war because fuzzers are often designed to be um, program agnostic and uh, the inputs generated by them are often not able to bypass complex sanity checks inside the program. Because of this, uh, uh, Deep code passes cannot be easily triggered, and uh, thus bugs hidden in those code passes cannot be found easily. Uh, there have already been a lot of existing work trying to improve the efficiency of fuzzing. Most of them focus on input generation. For example, Twitter uses symbolic, uh, synactic symbolic execution, and the Vada uses taint, taint analysis in combination with data and the control flow analysis to aid the input generation in the further. Um, these, limit, these approaches are often very heavyweight and uh, do not scale. More importantly, even using the most advanced symbolic execution-based input generation techniques, it is very hard to bypass hard checks like checks uh, on uh, checksum values or cryptographic hash values because modern constraint solvers, uh, it is very hard for modern constraint solvers to generate accurate input that, that can satisfy those, those checks. Uh, in this work, we uh, solve the coverage issue from a different perspective by disabling the sanity checks. The key insight behind this idea is that some of the sanity checks in the target program are actually not intended to prevent bugs. Uh, examples include checks on uh, magic values, uh, checksums, and hash values. We term this category of uh, checks as uh, non-critical checks and uh, abbreviated as uh, MCCs. We, as, these bugs, as these checks are not intended to prevent bugs, it is uh, uh, removing, and removing them won't incur uh, erroneous bugs. But if we remove them, the fuzzing process uh, is greatly simplified. Uh, for example, in this simple F fuzzer, in this simple simple air passing program, the main logic of the, pro, uh, of the program is guarded by a check on the magic value in the file header. As, the, as this check is only intended to um, filter out the authentic uh, data, um, removing it won't incur uh, additional bugs. But if we remove it, fuzzing will, be, um, will become more efficient because all the further data inputs will cover the main logic of the program. Uh, based on these considerations, we propose a new fuzzing scheme based on program transformation, and it works like this. Internally, we use a coverage-guided fuzzer that to generate input and uh, explore the program space. When the fuzzer gets stuck and uh, no longer able to find new code paths, we use the program transformer uh, component to detect NC candidates inside the 
target program and transfer the program. And the transform program are continue to be first. If any crash, uh, this process continues. If any crashes are found uh, while fuzzing the transform program, we use the crash analyzer to verify that it is really a true bug in the original bug, uh, in the original program. Uh, in the next few slides, I will uh, introduce our techniques for detecting NCC candidates, uh, transforming the target program, and how we uh, verify the crashes in the uh, transform program. Uh, the, first pro the first research problem in, the, in this project is to uh, detect NCC candidates, which is uh, uh, essentially a very hard uh, problem and cannot be solved very precisely without using very complex and heavyweight program analysis techniques. In this work, for performance considerations, we use a less precise uh, approach that leverages the feedback from the further to detect uh, the NCC candidates. So when the further gets stuck, we use the edges in the control flow graph of the program, connecting covered and uncovered node by the uh, further as the approximation of uh, NCC candidates. This is an over approximate, thus uh, fuzzing the resulted transformed program might contain false positives but it is lightweight and very simple and robust, uh, can, which can be implemented based on dynamic tracing, which is very essentially used in all uh, coverage-guided furthers uh, nowadays. And we will introduce the, our techniques for filtering out the fourth party a little bit later. After NCC candidates are detected, the next step is to uh, transform the, the target program by removing them. Uh, to this end, there is also a lot of possible uh, options, but in our work, we uh, choose to negate the detected NCCs like this. Uh, first of all, it is very, very easy to implement because on all architectures, all conditional instruction, conditional jump instructions have the same names as their negated counterparts, so we can implement it simply by static panel rewriting. And, uh, there is no runtime overhead in the result of the target program. More importantly, the, target, uh, the, the control flow graph of the, of the transformed program keeps the same, so the traces of the transformed program can be mapped directly to the original program, and past constraints of the original program can be also uh, retrieved. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, our, as our approach for detecting NCCs are not precise, so there might be false positives in the, detect in, in, in the crashes we found in transport program. In this step, we use a symbolic execution-based approach to filter out the false positive and uh, reproduce bugs. Uh, it works by uh, symbolically tracing the transformed program to connect post constraints for the original program leading to the crash and the past constraints is then used to decide whether it is a false positive or not. If it is not a false positive, then we use the connected past constraints to generate inputs that is able to reproduce the crash in the original program. I will use two trivial examples to show how this approach works. Uh, this, example, uh, this, this example shows how we verify a true bug. This, uh, this program uh, has a bug guarded by two checks on input X and Y. And uh, as you can imagine, the check on what, the check on Y is hard for the further to get past. And uh, so uh, uh, our fuzzing, uh, uh, on fuzzing to TFUS is able to detect it as uh, NCC candidates and generate a transformed program like this with the detected NCC uh, negated. And then further in the transformed program, it is easy to get a uh, trace leading to a crash. Well, symbolically tracing the crash. Uh, for, re for regular uh, constraints, we keep it as it is. And for constraints derived from negated conditions, we uh, recover the past constraints by unnegating the, the past constraints. And uh, in this example, the connected past constraints is shown like this. Obviously, it is uh, satisfiable, and so this is a true bug. Uh, one solution from these constraint sets can be used to uh, reproduce the bug in the original program shown on the left. 
And uh, in this example, in the next example, I will show how uh, our approach can be used to filter out the false positive. So this program takes an input, and if it is a positive number, it calls function and pass it as an argument. In the code function, it checks the input again. If it is not a, if it is not a, a positive number, it uh, raises a, it, it raises a, a, a bug. And uh, well, first thing is, uh, it's uh, easy to imagine that this check uh, is uh, hard to be bypassed. So our first thing to uh, uh, TFIRST will detect it as an NCC uh, candidate and uh, well, for this transform program, we, we, we can easily trigger a, 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 a trigger a crash like this. Well, symbolic tracing the transform program uh, in the same way we, we connect pass constraint like this. Obviously, this uh, pass, con pass co constraint set is unset, so this is a false positive. Our further um, scheme based on program transformation also comes with uh, some limitations. First of all, uh, the false crashes uh, incurred by transforming the program sometimes might hinder the discovery of true bugs. For example, in this, exam in this program, if we uh, negate the check on the file pointer and uh, first the transform the program, a low pointer will be passed to F3 and a false crash will be incurred. Because of this, the true bug falling behind can never be triggered. And the second limitation is the, is, is the transformation uh, explosion issue. This is a kind of uh, analogous to a path explosion issue in symbolic execution. So while well, you fuzz it, a lot of copies of transform will be generated. And uh, sometimes it, is, uh, it makes it even harder to find bugs in the target program. And uh, these two limitations do have some impact on the performance of uh, TFIRST, and we will show it a little bit later in the evaluation section. Uh, to determine the relative effectiveness of our funding scheme, we evaluated TFIRST on three data sets, uh, the DARPA CGC data set, Marvel M data set, and the four real world program. To um, compare TFIRST with the Dreamer, we evaluated on the DARPA CGC data set. Uh, in, our experiment, in, in our experimental setup, AFL was able to find 105 bugs. Uh, Greener found 121, TFIRST found 166 bugs. Uh, TFIRST had an uh, improvement over uh, AFL by 58% and uh, an improvement over Greener by 37%. Uh, and due to the limitations mentioned uh, a little bit earlier and uh, TFIRST was defeated by uh, Gina in 10 of the programs. To compare TFIRST with uh, Verda and Stenix, we uh, evaluated it on uh, the novel M dataset. Uh, this dataset contains the vulnerable programs uh, containing, bug guarded by, uh, bugs, uh, containing bugs guarded by bugs, containing bugs guarded by hard-coded magic values, and thus uh, tools like uh, whether and the Stenic using static analysis to aid the input generation can easily figure out the expected inputs uh, to bypass the ch checks in, inside target program. That is why this program, uh, this approach has performed so well. Our, our uh, evaluation shows that given these favorable conditions, uh, TFA performs, uh, performs uh, uh, well enough. And, uh, in, in, the presence, in the presence of uh, hard checks in MD5, TFIRST was able to find more bugs. And TFIRST, due to the transformation explosion issue, uh, TFIRST uh, was defeated by uh, Stenix uh, in who, but it still was able to find more bugs than whether. More uh, interestingly, uh, TFIRST was able to find uh, one unintended bug in who. And, um, to uh, evaluate uh, TFIRST in real-world programs, we've evaluated uh, on four real-world programs shown in this table, which are widely used in related work. Uh, the verified crashes, the number of verified crashes are, are shown in this table. It shows that uh, it was able to find uh, a, a lot more crashes uh, in, in the real-world program. And uh, after inspecting these uh, 
crashes, we found the three new bug, oh, sorry, can, can, can we go, go back? Uh, operator, can, 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 we, can, we, can we go back by one step? No, oh, oh sorry, okay. So, um, after inspecting these uh, crashes, we found three new bugs in uh, two in image magic and two in, uh, and one in net popular. Uh, it is important note to note that these bugs are found in the latest release, uh, which have been uh, intensively first by security researchers. Uh, our TFAS was still able to find new bugs in those programs, showing that it is very effective in finding bugs. And uh, finally, to conclude, uh, Fuzzing so far have been limited by coverage and unable to find deep bugs in the target program. In this work, we extend the notion of fuzzing by mutating both the input and target program as well. And the experimental results show that it is more effective than state of uh, art fuzzing tools, uh, being able, uh, which has a um, considerable improvement uh, over Trainer and AF and uh, was able to uh, trigger bugs guarded by hard checks. It was uh, also able to find new bugs in real world programs. Uh, in the future, we plan to improve uh, the, our transformation strategies and uh, the filtering of false positives. Uh, we will release our code in this repository uh, very soon. And uh, if you are interested, please feel free to uh, uh, drop, drop, uh, uh, give us an email. And uh, that's all for my presentation. And Thanks very much. I'm uh, ready to take questions. OK, so yeah, we have time for a few questions. Sabla Chanak Chabasu University. So I have two questions. The first question is about the results that you have reported. So you were telling that false crashes might hinder the discovery of the true bugs and still meaning that some of the false positives, after a manual analysis, you can say that, okay, this specific input is still causing a bug. Uh, the results that you're reporting, are those including the ones, uh, uh, including the m uh, manual analysis, or they're just? Uh, yes, uh, all, first of all, all the results are verified, all, all the crashes we found are ver uh, verified, and uh, some of the crashes are verified manually, yeah. I see, so if the number of uh, post was far too much, it's gonna sort of increase the performance of the users. Yes, that's true. Okay, so my second question is basically the control pro flow graph. So we know that control flow graph can be incomplete, right? Meaning that uh, because of the indirect jumps, uh, what kind of control flow graph are you using? Is that cause any challenge on your research? Well, we do, yes, I, I but we, uh, we do have a dynamic trace, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, using a dynamic trace, you can locate where the code is. So uh, I, I, I think you are mentioning that the co construction of control flow graph statically is uh, hard, but uh, we have dynamic trace, right? Okay, okay, thank mm. you so much. Uh, Peter Neumann again, quick question. Uh, I've always been a little uh, suspicious of fuzzing, but uh, let me ask you, um, when, you're, when you're claiming you're finding bugs, uh, can you make a distinction between exploitable bugs and just under, uh, ordinary bugs that nobody could ever do anything with? Oh, uh, well, mm, we... I could, uh, uh, I, I didn't verify whether the crashes we've, I found in the real world programs are exploitable or not. Uh, I think that's the answer, and I will definitely check that. Thanks for the question. Okay, uh, one quick question from my side. Uh, so what kind of input seed did you use? Uh, usually I use, uh, for most of the tests, uh, I use random seeds. So that's, uh, that's an advantage over uh, some existing tools like uh, Vaza and the Skinix. Okay, so let's thank the speaker one more time.